Florida football is undefeated in 2024 right now. That might not last very long. Brandon Olson, Locked On Gators, joining me here on the show. This is the toughest schedule in all of college football. This may be the toughest college football schedule we've seen in the last decade plus in the entire sport, Brandon, and it comes at a time where Billy Napier has questions about his job security. Now, I'll say up front, pending the outcome of week one against Miami that I do think Florida is capable of winning at home down in the swamp. I think they are either five and seven or four and eight. I do not believe they're making a bowl game. I also don't believe it'll lead to Billy Napier's firing because I don't think it's a fair examination of his coaching record to say, hey, as you're rebuilding the program here, go play the hardest schedule we could possibly find. Fair, but you're, you're, you're screwing up one bit. You're using logic here. Ah, and, and we don't do that. Um, this is the University of Florida. You win games. Silly me. Well, yeah, yeah. This is the University of Florida. You win games, you get the hell out. Uh, that, that's the approach that they love taking. Um, I do believe that the expectation behind closed doors is win at least six games and keep your job. Uh, if you win five, but you look significantly better than you did last year, keep your job. Uh, win five games and you look the same as you did against Arkansas and Kentucky last year, you're going to be looking for a new job, but really hefty buyout. So congratulations. Yeah, the buyout is the saving grace for Billy Napier. I, I think that he really stabilizes things for a while. If he finds a way to start two and one, which is doable, you have two SEC or you have one SEC game and a tough ACC game at home because it's it's Miami, it's Samford, it's Texas A and M before you go at Mississippi State, who might be along with Vandy the worst team in, in the SEC this year. There is a path there to starting three and one, but you have to beat one of Miami. Or Texas A&M. And on my official prediction here, Brandon, I've got Texas A&M as a loss. I have Miami as a toss-up. And I think that first game is going to determine a lot about how Gators fans view Billy Napier throughout the course of the season and after. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I've said this multiple times. I do think that Florida will win both those games. Um, it, and it, it's not me trying to be like a hardcore homer. I just think that for Miami... They did a lot through the transfer portal this year, trying to go into the swamp, win there week one. It's tough. You're, and I've said, you know, you if this game's week eight, I feel differently. But it's not. It, this mm -hmm. will be an actual live game together with Cam Ward, with that offensive line, with the defense trying to get on the same page, which I know they went out and they brought a bunch of great players all around. Sure, you still got to communicate. You still got to go out there and actually – be able to run your system effectively. It's tough to do that in the swamp. We've seen teams with way more experience come into the swamp and lose. Florida hasn't lost a home opener in what, three decades. It, it, it's tough to, to manage that one. And again, like we saw Utah come in and sure the temperature played a factor, which by the way, way more humid in Gainesville than it is in Miami. Like I, I know that you're still Florida, it's way more humid up. In Brandon, Gainesville. are you telling me there's humidity in Florida? This is the first I'm hearing of it. I'm telling you it's way more humid in Gainesville than Miami. That is not a joke. Miami, you get a nice little breeze. Gainesville, you die. Like, it, it's hot out there. <laughs> uh, it's hot. It's humid. It's tough. Um, I do think that Florida should win that game. and It's, it's just how it is. Texas a and you got to show me, man. I mean, you're going to be starting a couple guys. You no, know, if it were if it were Jimbo, I'd be I'd be with you. But it's Mike Elko, and I think Elko is excellent. I think Connor Wigman is good. I think one point during the summer, I might have undersold his abilities a little. He's still somewhat unproven, but he can make some like Connor Wigman, Graham Mertz. I think six out of ten times they play on the same field. Wigman looks like the better quarterback. But if this is one of those four times. Because it's in the swamp, you never know. Like, Graham Mertz is definitely better than most people think. I, I, I don't think most people would look at his numbers and say, wow, he was a he was a what percentage completion guy last year? The number was 72, 71. Like, that's a pretty high level. There aren't a lot of guys that are able to hit that clip. I, I'd feel better about their offense if they had landed Keandre Lambert-Smith from Penn State. But I love the Elijah Badger edition on offense. I think they have enough pieces elsewhere 
to be capable like the, the schedule just it just stinks so i think miami is my toss-up game for for florida samford that's a win texas a&m i like the aggies in that spot we'll see if i feel the same way going into that game at mississippi state in starkville that's a win ucf at home that's a win at tennessee that's a loss kentucky at home that to me is a win by the way don't sleep on ucf just i was, I was gonna say i i am more scared of ucf than i am of texas a&m uh, oh. X defense is going to be starting guys that started on Florida's defense last year. Bad, true, bad, true bad, but they're going to have Mike. They're going to have Mike Elko as their head coach and defensive coordinator influencer at the very least. And Mike Elko is very, very good. They brought two Florida defensive coaches from last year, and they brought three Florida defensive players from last year. Yeah, but they also bring Mike Elko to the table. And I mean, they also bring those guys. Like, they bring Scooby Williams, and I love Scooby, but like, <laughs> he's not an SEC starter. Not I, just I, because, I I not I just because he's named after the greatest cartoon of all time. No, not, not just because I, yeah, I love his intensity and his fire. I just don't okay. think he's an SEC starter. Quality okay. Player. Okay. Okay. Well, well, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it go. I could see him beating Texas AM. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Right now, I'd pencil that one down as a loss. But the reason this Florida schedule is so unbelievably brutal and could lead to Billy Napier's firing, though I don't suspect that it will, is they go Georgia at Texas, LSU, Ole Miss at Florida State. Look, if you give me a five-game stretch in which the most winnable game is hosting LSU, who we're going to talk about later on today's show as a team that has got a pretty solid chance of making the playoff when that's arguably the most winnable game i might argue florida state but it's at fsu but you don't have to travel that far for it so at the very least it's a, it's a tough road environment but you don't have some big cross-country trip or or anything of the sorts but when those are the most winnable games in a stretch i mean come on come, like uh, is, is florida gonna win any of those games I don't know. Uh, honestly, I think I think with LSU, a lot of it depends on Garrett Nussmeyer and how he's going to adapt here. They got a really good offensive line. I completely defense, agree. A lot, a lot of changes defensively. Uh, Matt House is out, so we'll see what happens there. Um, they brought in I, Baker, I think his name is from Missouri. yeah Blake Baker from Missouri. Had a really, yeah. really good, really, really good year for the Tigers last season. Yeah, and Florida's offense had had a good game against them uh, up until Graham Mertz got hurt. So we'll see how that matchup goes. I mean, Florida State is one of those schools where they're just replacing a lot of senior production. So I honestly don't even know how to gauge them right now. I know that they're thought of. I, I, I'd say for FSU, with with a pretty favorable ACC schedule, they're a lock to win 10-plus games. I don't think they're a national championship contender. They can make the playoff. Yeah. Maybe as an at-large, but probably as an ACC champ. Yeah. I don't see them as being as talented as they were a season ago. I think they have downgraded at quarterback. DJU is fine, but he is not great. I think they have a really good roster, but I don't think it's as good as last year's. They'll have a great defensive line, but do they have a guy on there that's as good as Jared Verse? Probably not, and because that's just setting a really high bar. So I think they're about 80 to 85% of what they were a season ago. Yeah, I, I I think that's my big thing. It's just like I they're replacing a lot of good football players. Like I, their roster makeup last year, was really, really good. You had Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson. Uh, you had uh, Trey Benson. You had Jaheim Bell. You had Jared Verse and Braden Fisk on the defensive line. You yeah. had two draft picks in the secondary. They had a really good football team last year, and you're replacing a lot of that. And it's not just that you're replacing guys. Like, sure, win 10 games in the ACC. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're a good football team. You are you got to replace a lot of guys, and I do think that, yeah, sure, playoff contender team just because – yeah, 10 wins is very achievable for them. But I, I honestly, like I said, I just don't even know how to gauge them. I, They're just replacing too much for me to say that I have an opinion of them either way. Um, but I do think that when you look at who Florida has in those final five, they're the second most winnable game. I, yep. Ole Miss. Completely. Well, you think Ole Miss or LSU is more winnable? Because I'd say LSU. Oh, no, is I, I was I was saying that Ole Miss is too damn good, and I. Think oh, oh, okay, okay. I'm glad I'm glad we're on the same page. But I, I want to wrap with some clarity here. I have Florida at a five and seven or a four and eight, pending whether they can win either the Miami game or Texas A and M, which are both possible because they're at home. But I think they miss a bowl game this year. I still think they keep Billy Napier. Maybe I th I have them at six wins. Um, I I do think that they've really upgraded this roster. 
I think that they're again, like I know this is such a lame thing to say, but these guys, like they they're built like culture wise, they've built a lot. I know that from national perspective, it's oh, floor is a dumpster fire. I am telling you factually, inside that facility, they think they're really, really good. Get Which out of here with your that. facts. Yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad that you think that. Um, but I think that as you pointed out earlier, logic look down yeah, upon facts just, get out of here out the leave yeah if you can win one of those games in the last five i think you're in a bowl just because you should be able to win yeah yeah i i think i think that i think that's that's entirely possible and having eight home games definitely helps you and and by the way the at tennessee game is one that i'm tempted to say oh maybe they could win but the revenge factor for tennessee no i i don't see that one uh in in knoxville you're talking me in to a hard five and seven Maybe I get there on a week-by-week basis for the Florida Gators. Brandon Olson, Locked On Gators. Brandon, appreciate the time. Thank you.